Today is Wednesday, June 24th, and you're looking at a daily chart of the SPY index. Today was a big down day for all indices. The SPY was down, Qs were down, diamonds were down, all over 2%, and they're attributing the down day for the resurgence of the virus. The futures started trading flat, actually, until headlines came from the IMF that they're expecting global GDP forecast to be slashed, that it's worse than expected. They're actually saying that it's going to be catastrophic and like no other. They detailed in their projection that the entire GDP of the world will be down around 5% this year, 8% for the United States, 10% for the Euro area, and 10% for Latin America. And for Asia, it will be down almost a percent. And don't get fooled by the projections for 2021, because it looks a little rosy. For the world, it's going to be 5.4, United States 4.5. However, they made a disclosure that these projections for 2021 do not count a second wave of the coronavirus. The IMF also said that the public debt as a share of the GDP now exceeds the all-time highs during World War II. That is a grim outlook for the economy. We are drowned in debt worldwide, globally. Here are some charts about the rising numbers of coronavirus infections in different states. Here's Nevada. An explosion to the upside. They opened casinos not long ago, and here you go. This is the result. You go to Georgia, huge explosion to the upside. This was one of the first states to reopen, and now they're reaping the results. Here's Arizona. Arizona is just exploding to the upside in terms of new cases. Texas, that doesn't look good either. California, California just registered the highest number of infections. Yet, I think it's around 7,000 per day. And, of course, Florida now registering the highest number of cases they've seen. Matter of fact, Florida just Florida residents received a text message recommending wearing masks in public. Of course, had we adhered to the recommendation from the scientists and the experts and we wore masks and quarantined like we're supposed to and avoid crowded gatherings, we would have had better control on the virus, just like Europe had. Here is a 15 minutes chart of the daily action in the queues, the technology sector. They started after this candle. This was a candle from yesterday. We started here. You see the dip buyers already bought the dip and they got smoked. They tried to buy it again and they got smoked. They try to buy it again and again and the market just keeps selling off. So. Not a good day for the dip buyers, even though the gambling crowd and their cult leaders, of course, shooting tweets that stocks only go up. Well, today they went down. Here's a daily chart on the dollar index. I remember yesterday we said that this was a big reversal here. We raised two days worth of work, but then we had an inconclusive candle here of the dollar. And we said if this was a dip to be bought and there are higher prices in the dollar index, that's going to be bad news for the stock market because there's a rush to liquidity raising cash. Here is a daily chart of the VIX, the volatility index, and let me remind you of what I said yesterday in yesterday's video. The volatility index, and I've been maintaining the position that until unless we close below this gap and we crack the blue line where the volatility index goes to its normal range, I'm still buying the dips on the VIX. I'm still buying the dips. Even though it was a big down day for the VIX in the morning, it's actually trending positive in the aftermarket right now. Because I explained to you and I maintain the position that once we have a big pop on the VIX, historically speaking, every time a big pop, a cool off and a gathering of energy, for a secondary move to the upside and the move we're having right now is just too small to complement this large move that we had this is probably a pop 
consolidation and another pop and here we go we had a big update sold off a little bit at the end but it's still trending to this theory that this is just a consolidation to follow up for the secondary move of this big primary move right here here is a daily chart of the UVXY a proxy of the VIX and you can see today we had a big volume day big volume days in the VIX are usually not a good sign take a look at the increasing of the volume here when we started to shoot up to this huge big leg during the initial shock of the coronavirus crisis in the US historically speaking rising volume in the VIX is an indicator for bigger moves to the upside in the VIX which correlates with lower prices in the stock market today was a terrible day for the gambling crowds favorites the, the travel stocks the airlines the cruises and the casinos terrible day and let me remind you of what I said last week about these stocks conclusion we remain cautious we remain bearish and we continue to buy the VIX to protect our long portfolio and we continue to short the rip in airline stocks and weaker stocks that are being pushed by day trading or gambling activities these names are weak they have no merit to go up and you, when you see it when you look at the real charts in the economy and the recovery specifically for the airlines hotels cruises they don't look good so we continue to short the rip in these weak names and here we go fast forward Norwegian Cruise Line is down over 12 percent today and when you count three month movement it's down 5.6 so all the bros who bought Norwegian and kept hyping it up online that this is gonna be the next thing it's a great opportunity well you're starting to lose your money now and you lose more in the days to come because investing in the stock market is not for gamblers just because a stock went down in price significantly it doesn't mean that it's a buying opportunity and it's just gonna bounce back to the older older prices again stocks went down for a reason they're not performing like they used to their valuations are gonna be cut buying these stocks is a recipe for disaster here's another one of the gambling crowds favorite American Airlines down 7% today down 19 percent in the past three months so all the uh, Robin Hood traders who started accumulating stakes in American Airlines thinking that they're smarter than Warren Buffett are now seeing the results Buffett is right you are wrong another casualty is the casino industry particularly Wynn Resorts down 11 percent today when you count in three-month movement it's down 2.7 2.8 percent almost and it's gonna trend down and down because coronavirus cases are rising in Las Vegas and business didn't return to normal in Macau so there are more pain to come to this industry and to the city of Las Vegas in general let's take a look at the chart of Apple Apple was a major player today because it went down it was leading the market along with Microsoft but it was a big day to the downside today considering that Apple keeps going up and up every day of course if you saw my video from last yesterday I initiated a short position in Apple I opened a put for the 350 put for next week expiring next week and I didn't do anything today the position is still profitable I might turn it into a dead spread later on the target for Apple would be going down closing this gap right here at approximately 343 and then we'll take it from there another trade I initiated yesterday is a short on the queues I bought puts in the SQQQ which which shorts the um, queues the technology sector I opened a small position it was a wild shot but I intended to adding to the position today however the position was highly profitable today up 500 percent so I had to sell it and take profits given the fact that it expires by the end of this week you don't want to take a lot of risk 
when you have a position expiring at the end of the week. Once you make profits, you want to close it and move on. So what do I see for tomorrow and the remainder of the week? Let's just say that greed, when the market's so frothy like it is right now, is not good. Stocks don't just go up all the time. Stocks will have to correct. We talked about this over and over and over in my previous videos. And we're going to see a correction here. And the greedy pigs who, didn't, who don't want to take their profits, they will get slaughtered. The bulls made a run at it. They're making profits. The bears will make profits in the downturn. And, but the pigs, the greedy pigs who don't take profits and just believe that stocks go up all the time, they will get slaughtered. Short-term target on the queues for the correction would be the top of this green candle here, the gap, at 232 approximately. As far as the SPY is concerned, our target would be the bottom of this green candle here where the market reversed initially. We're going to have to go down and test it, see if there are buyers who will hold the market to the upside again. Overall, we remain bearish on the stock market. I explained to you that when you make a higher high, in the case of the Qs, for example, yet you make a lower high on the RSI, here's a higher high on the chart, here's a lower high on the RSI. It basically tells you that this move, it doesn't have the strength that justifies the move and it will be corrected soon. You can look at history and it's the same thing. Every time you make a higher high on the chart but a lower high on the RSI, it's always followed by a correction. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe, share, and like. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter.